Welcome to Zion Lutheran Church, Plumas, Manitoba, a congregation of Lutheran Church Canada. Here is our pastor with Sunday's homily. Faith, hope, and joy fill your hearts and your believing. Amen. Psalm 111 is a psalm of praise for the great and wondrous works of the Lord. Although we are exactly one week away from Christmas Day on this fourth Sunday in Advent, Psalm 111 is usually appointed for the Christmas season, not necessarily the Advent season. It is appointed for Christmas because in verse 9 of our Psalm 111, the psalmist declares, the Lord has sent redemption to his people. There is absolutely no doubt that the redemption sent by the Lord was not only a remembrance of Israel's past redemption from Egypt when they were slaves, but it was also and still is a future redemption in Jesus Christ, the Redeemer of the world. God the Father sent his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who was conceived in the virgin's womb by God the Holy Spirit and born on Christmas Day of the Virgin Mary in order to redeem us and all of humanity from death and sin by his death and resurrection from the dead. It's very interesting that from the earliest days of the Christian church, in the city of Rome, perhaps, as some suggest, as early as St. Paul and St. Peter, the apostles, Psalm 111 was appointed for prayer at the Sunday evening Vesper service. Now, whoever appointed Psalm 111 to be prayed for the Vesper service on Sunday evening did so with great intention because as the early Christians prayed Psalm 111, they were reminded that their redemption was sent in Jesus Christ, who purchased and won them, us, by his death and resurrection. And they were reminded that that redemption was sent to them Sunday morning. Psalm 111 is included in book five of the five books or what would have been scrolls of the Psalter. Psalm 111 is also the first of the seven Alleluia Psalms, which are Psalms 111 to 117. These are called the Alleluia Psalms because they have a very specific reference to the word hallelujah in Hebrew. It is a transliteration of the Hebrew. Hallelujah means praise the Lord. And so in light of the opening verse of Psalm 111, praise the Lord, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation, along with the Christmas verse of the Psalm, verse nine, the Lord sent redemption to his people we can truly understand why the early Christian church appointed Psalm 111 for the Psalm of Evening Vespers on Sunday evening. On Sunday morning, in the company of the upright, in the congregation, the church and her members praised the Lord for the great and wonderful works ultimately accomplished in Jesus' death and resurrection. And the benefits of Jesus' work of redemption and salvation through his death and resurrection are given, delivered, distributed to the people of God in the divine service on Sunday morning. And having received the forgiveness of sins, life and salvation in the word of God and the sacraments of God on Sunday morning in the company of the upright, in the congregation, we, along with those early believers, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And furthermore, Sunday is the day of the week that the Church of Jesus Christ remembers, commemorates the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
Every Sunday is a Easter celebration, a mini Easter, so to speak. Just as every Wednesday is a reminder for us to fast and to pray that we would not be led into temptation, so that we would not betray our Lord Jesus Christ in any way, like Judas betrayed Jesus on Wednesday for 30 pieces of silver. Or just as the church remembers every Friday that Jesus was crucified on the cross for our sin and the sin of the world. At the noon hour, it is a commemoration of when our Lord Jesus hung on the cross, stretching out his arms in love to embrace you, me, and the entire world in his death. And therefore, on Sunday evening, when Psalm 111 was prayed by the church and her members in the very early Christian church, when it was appointed, the psalm concluded the weekly cycle of remembering the total and full redemption that the Lord sent to his people in the conception, the birth, the life, the death, the burial, the resurrection and ascension of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Redeemer of the world. In the past, God redeemed his people Israel under Moses and brought them out of the house of Egypt, the house of slavery and bondage, and brought them to freedom. The Lord's act of redemption for his people Israel at the time of the Exodus was actually a foretaste of the complete and total act of redemption in Jesus' death and resurrection for us and all of humanity. In verses 4 and 5, the psalmist declares, The Lord has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. Notice that it is the Lord who remembers his covenant forever. For the Lord is gracious and merciful because he has sent redemption to his people when he brought them out of Egypt and provided food for them in the wilderness, thus redeeming the people of God from their physical hunger and thirst. And remember, pardon the pun, that it was Jesus himself who provided food for his people in the wilderness. In John chapter 6, Jesus teaches us that he is the bread of life. And the bread, the manna, the food that the Lord provided for Israel in the wilderness was simply a foretaste of the true bread of life that comes down from heaven above to earth below to give his life for the world. So indeed, the Lord sent redemption in Jesus Christ, who came down from heaven above to be born on earth below in Bethlehem, which means house of bread. For Jesus is the living bread of heaven that comes down to give us his body and blood under the forms of bread and wine for the forgiveness of our sins, to redeem us from death, the devil, hell, for eternal life with him in heaven. The word redemption has the concept of transaction or payment. And the concept of redemption is used a bit more positively than the concept or metaphor of ransom. I think Martin Luther explains this concept of redemption the best in the second article of the Creed where he tells us and teaches us that we were lost and condemned because of our sin and death. However, the Lord Jesus Christ has redeemed you. He has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me, won you from sin, from death, from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood and his innocent, bitter suffering and death on the cross. So the transaction, the payment that redeemed us, that redeemed all of humanity from our sinful, lost, dead condemnation is the holy, precious blood of Jesus. 
because the blood of Jesus cleanses and purifies us from all sin for eternal life that is guaranteed by the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, on the third day. And the Lord, according to our psalm, remembers his covenant forever. For Jesus established the new covenant when he took bread and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus said, Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me this new covenant. The covenantal food of Jesus' very body and blood for the forgiveness of sins is an everlasting memorial of the Lord's great and wondrous works of salvation and redemption that was finally sent in Jesus' incarnation when Jesus was conceived by God the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. When, of course, that act of redemption was complete when he was crucified on the cross for our sins, buried, and rose again on the third day for our justification. Ascended into heaven so that where he is, you may be also. So when we pray Psalm 111 on Sunday, we once again bring to remembrance all the great redemptive works and wonders of the Lord that he has accomplished in our midst. Not only the redemption he accomplished when he brought Israel out of Egypt, but we remember he has redeemed all of humanity in Jesus appearing, in his life, death, burial, and glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven. On top of all that, we also remember how Jesus' redemption is given and applied to us in word and sacraments on Sunday morning so that we, having received this redemption in word and sacraments, can praise the Lord. But ultimately, the one who remembers is the Lord himself, because, of course, the psalm says, the Lord remembers his covenant forever. Yes, it is true that we remember all the gifts and blessings the Lord gives to us in the company of the upright in the congregation, we remember that the Lord sent us redemption in our Savior, Jesus Christ. But our remembrance would be absolutely worthless had the Lord not remembered his covenant forever. The Lord's everlasting covenant was signed and sealed when our Redeemer died, when he shed his blood from the cross to forgive all our sins. The blood of the new covenant for the forgiveness of sins is poured out for you and for all in the Holy Supper. It is the very body and blood of Jesus Christ under the forms of bread and wine. It is the pledge of God's promise to redeem you from all sin, from death and from the power of the devil for eternal life. And so, just as God remembers never to flood the world again, with water, when he sees the sign of that covenant he made with Noah in the sky, the rainbow, so the Lord looks and remembers his covenant and promise to forgive you, to be gracious and merciful to you through the blood of Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, his blood that was spilt from the cross that is given to us in his supper, the new covenant, which is the forgiveness of sins through the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom be glory forever and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. You can find and follow Zion Lutheran Church Plumas on Facebook under Zion Lutheran 
or on our open Facebook page called Zion's Sermons. Please like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.